Man, what's with the weather today? Yeah, <laughs> pretty cold. <laughs> Good way it to start us off. Snowing. Good evening to you, James. <laughs> Good evening, Brandon. Good, Good evening, evening to you, Ben. Did you just already say good evening before I said good evening to you, I Ben? I said good evening, boys. So Shameful. Shameful, shameful. as well. Uh, I was Ben's trying to be polite. Man. If anyone's interested in being the new third host of the Graveyard Broadcast, please send us an email. Um, at my name is Brian Reed. Graveyard Broadcast. Just shut up, like, at Ben. Team stop. Com. You've already fired. Stop making <laughs> it worse. Um, yeah, uh, this is the Graveyard Broadcast, and we're still in lockdown. Still not in the same room. So, stage four for the next um, six weeks. Mm -hmm. That's right. We're gonna. We have a curfew now. So mm. that's fun. That's pretty um, spooky. That's pretty spooky. <laughs> uh, before we jump into it, have you boys done anything spooky in the last week? Any any anything going on? Watched anything? I have just been working, man. That is it. It's been fun. It hasn't. I want to shoot my brains out. That's pretty spooky. Spooky. That's pretty spooky. Work. Scariest place I've been. Um, anything from you, Ben? Haven't done anything? No, pretty much. I've just been watching Netflix. I've been getting fatter. That's yeah, a bit spooky. spooky? Uh, letting the team down, boys. What have you I done? I also have not done anything spooky. So. What is there I, to do, I've Brandon? Been reading, I've been reading 1984 by George Orwell. Just finished it, actually. I guess... It's a sci-fi, but it's still kind of spooky. The prospect of... Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> I've got some news here. I thought before we get into your stories, I thought we'd just start with this news article that popped up the other day from Seven News. Ghost girl appears behind teacher during online class. Yeah. Uh, well, there's a photo from the, from the webcam video. Uh, that'll be on our Instagram, but essentially, uh, a mysterious figure appeared behind a teacher in their house in Mexico, I guess, Mexico. Mexico is pretty scary. Yep. <laughs> Never been, can't verify. Yeah. It went viral on Twitter when someone posted it, the tweet had the clip with a quote, check out what happened to a friend in the middle of an online class. His teacher lives alone and has just moved into that house. Um, yeah, it's not that interesting, but the teacher said he was alone and there's a spooky girl behind him. The photos are pretty creepy. Again, it'll be on our Instagram, so give that a look. But aside from that, I haven't seen much going on in the news that's really supernatural or scary or anything. So what are you boys talking about today? So, I will be talking about a scary young girl called Mary Bell. Mm. I'm Ben. Oh, I, I thought there was going to be more to that. Uh. you got to wait and see, Ben. I'll be talking about the real-life case that inspired the novel and subsequent movie, The Exorcist, The Exorcism of Ronald Doe. Interesting. All right, uh, I guess we'll heads and tails it for you boys. Um, who's heads? I'll go tails. All right, heads. James is tails. Heads or tails? Rosencrantz says heads. I don't know what Rosencrantz is, but heads. What is a Who's Rosencrantz? Ben. Ben Ben's going first. first today. Anyone, can anyone explain the Rosencrantz reference? Don't know. Cool. Thanks, Siri. Um, <laughs> Love you. Ben, kick us off. Hey guys, it's Bran here from the future, from the editing phase. And I just wanted to put in a little warning here that this first segment does contain references and jokes that pertain to pedophilia within the Christian church. If this is something that offends you or makes you uncomfortable, you can skip to the second segment, which begins at about 53 minutes. All right. So to kick things off. I'm talking about how in the late 1940s in the United States, 
Priests of the Roman Catholic Church performed a series of exorcisms on an anonymous boy documented in the attending priest's diaries under the pseudonym Ronald Doe or Robbie Manaheim. So he was a 14-year-old boy born in 1935 who was the alleged victim of demonic possession and the events were recorded by the attending priest Raymond J. Bishop and the subsequent supernatural claims surrounding the events were used in elements of William Blatty's novel The Exorcist in 1971 and in the 1973 film adaption of the same name. Either of you not seen The Exorcist? I have not. I've only seen, like, those YouTube videos, like, back in Year 7 of just watching The Exorcist. And wasn't there, like, a scary movie scene about that too? But that there was, was like, Scary Movie 2. Dirty. Yeah. Yeah, the intro to Scary Movie 2. Yeah. I've seen The Exorcist. I have seen The Exorcist. Personally, not a fan. I enjoyed it. Like, I'm... It's all right, but... And I get it's more than a horror. It's more, it's kind of like a drama, more so. But, like, I just never got into the whole 60s, 70s, satanic horror thing, like the Omen and the Exorcist. Like, the concept just bores me. Didn't people think I it mean, was, like, a real de- thing back then? Fuck off, Ben! <laughs> well, it is, James. If you listen to the story, you <laughs> fuckhead... <laughs> Um, <laughs> yeah, but like the movie, a lot of people believe like what was happening in the movie was real. I don't know. If you like, listen to know, my story today, James, because it was very. Then hurry the fuck up, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> but no, like I, I enjoyed The Exorcist. I haven't read the novel, but yeah, most people know the image of Regan from the Scary Maze game, I guess. Oh yeah. Uh, scared the shit out of me when I was like eight. <laughs> Haunted me throughout my childhood. So does Ben. I didn't play it myself. I watched my dad play it. <laughs> right in front of I never played it. I just watched the <laughs> clip of the dude that punches these computer screen in. Fuck, those were the days, man. Um, so in the mid-1940s, so about 1949... Several newspaper articles printed anonymous reports of an alleged possession and exorcism, and sources for these reports is thought to be the family's former pastor, Luther Miles Schultz. There's going to be a lot of Roman Catholic names, and I'm not going to pronounce them right. So, Raymond. (laughs) Could we just pause for a second? I want to talk about that time we were at a picnic for our friend's <laughs> birthday. <laughs> James, what are you doing? You're talking about spilling pasta sauce or something? Yeah, when you spill pasta sauce on your white shirt, like never wear a yeah, white shirt. Yeah, I was shirt. talking about a time I spilled pasta sauce on something and this religious kid comes up and goes, I know you're making fun of my religion. We're like, what? He's like, I heard you say pasta. <laughs> like, That's <"What?"> ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was funny. I know you're talking shit, huh? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> like just, no, I literally had pasta sauce all over my shirt and I had to buy a new shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Ever had spaghetti? Gets everywhere. Hurry up, then! So, yeah, they, they thought their former past, um, uh, the family's former pastor was the sources of all these claims for these newspaper articles. According to one account, a total of 48 people witnessed the exorcism on this kid. Nine of them were something called a Jesus, which is a religious order of the Catholic Church, which is a term I'd never heard before. What is it again? Because I heard Jesus. Do you say cheese? G- Jesus, like as in like, G- like Jesus Christ, like and like suits, so like Jesus. What? Cheese suits. Nah, I get you. Cheese G- suits. Okay. <laughs> it's a J and Ch sound the same through this video call. No, I wasn't talking to you, Siri. It's a weird <laughs> term that came up a lot researching this topic, and I never heard of it before. So what are we calling our fan base? Jesus. No. No. I'd rather no. we didn't. Nah. Okay. Uh, so, growing no. up... Pasta. <laughs> pasta the food Sorry. or pasta the religious guy? 
Yeah. The food. So the entire time, ma- imagine spaghetti strands performing these exorcisms. As an Italian, I can envision that. <laughs> all he thinks about. <laughs> yeah. If it's not, if it's not pizza, it's pasta. This guy. <laughs> So Ben's one of those like shitty twirly ones that no one likes. Oh Sp- yeah, the spirals. <laughs> yeah, that's the one. And I'm the one that's shaped like dinosaurs. <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> yeah, and everyone exactly. kind of wants. No, to I'm the classy. I'm the I'm the bow tie pasta. No, you're the shit one. Shut up. <laughs> oh. Uh, so growing Spiral up, pasta Ronald piece of shit. didn't have. Shut the fuck up about pasta, James. <laughs> So, growing up, Ronald didn't have many friends, can't relate, and often relied on his family for entertainment. Primarily his aunt, who was a known spiritualist and introduced Ronald to how the Ouija board worked when he expressed interest in it. According to reports, after Ronald's aunt's death, the family experienced strange noises such as scratching within the walls (laughs) and floors, furniture moving on its own accord, water inexplicably dripping from the walls and pipes, and ordinary objects such as vases flying or levitating when Ronald was nearby. This was identified by priests as the first stage of classical possession known as infestation. Ooh. Oh, are you going to lead us through the whole exorc- how exorcism works in general then? No. Stages and... The power of Christ compels no. you. No. Because cool, we're going to we- do that in next week's episode where we talk about a different exorcism. <laughs> so you can't do it now. <laughs> Spoilers! No, we're leaving nah, that. I'm talking shit. I don't, we don't even know what next week is about yet. <laughs> Yeah, (laughs) that's my topic to announce at the end of this episode. But no, I thought about touching on, like, all the different stages of, like, the exorcism stuff, but a lot of it, there wasn't really any details with each stage of this case. So I thought I'd skip over it and leave it for a more detailed exorcism. Hurry up, Ben, fuck! Okay, that and a lot of James' dialogue is going to be cut. Um, it was not. The family then turned to their Lutheran pastor, Luther Miles Schultz, for help as he had been interested in the psychology behind psychic phenomenons for quite some time. And as a result, requested that Ronald spend the night at his house for observation, which is already a sketchy topic we're not getting into of a grown man asking a 14-year-old boy to stay at his house. So according to sources, this night of, of, of observation led to claims by the pastor that he himself had witnessed household objects and furniture seemingly moving by themselves and advised Ronald's parents to see a Catholic priest. It was What's a packet of pasta flying across the room. Well, one's Lutheran and one's Catholic. They're different parts of a religion. Oh, different religions? Yeah. Okay. I'm not that well informed with religious. Neither yeah, am I. I. Cool. Glad we've got some variety. <laughs> <laughs> According to the traditional story, Ronald then underwent a series of very harsh and, like, grueling exorcisms. So while undergoing an exorcism by the Roman Catholic priest at Georgetown University Hospital, Ronald allegedly slipped one of his hands out of the restraints, broke a bed spring from under the mattress and used it as an impromptu weapon, slashing the priest's arm and resulting in the exorcism ritual being halted. Jesus. So a few days after that exorcism took place, red scratches appeared on Ronald's body. One of the scratches formed the word Louis, which indicated to Ronald's mother that the family needed to go to St. Louis, where they had relatives in order to save their son. So while in St. Louis... (laughs) I mean... James is really (laughs) struggling to not to laugh at that. (laughs) I don't know the name of Louis, it's just like... It carved on his body was yeah. Louis. 
<laughs> what does it say on his body? Is it death? Kill? Louis. Louis. <laughs> it's like, oh, that's, that's my cousin's name. <laughs> <laughs> my cousin what? Louis. My cousin Louis. You know, the guy from the pasta shop. <laughs> <laughs> Come to Louis' pasta. That was, that was more trans Romanian than Italian. James, do it. See. <laughs> Great to have you Porta here, James. Ruga. Ciao. All right. We've showed off our diversity. Yeah. Yeah. So in... Let's get on to St. Louis. Let's go. In St. Louis, another exorcism was performed by two priests at the local college church after they had paid a visit to Ronald's family home and witnessed accounts of the bed shaking flying objects, Ronald speaking in a guttural voice and exhibiting an aversion to anything sacred. So he shook his bed and they were like demons? Is that what you're telling me? Yeah, he basically did what I do every single time I see a cross and went, oh, hell no, and walked away. What? Okay. Yep. You're a weirdo, man. I hate religion. Sorry, any religious Uh, listeners. Yeah. (laughs) Religion is the reason war exists and money. <laughs> but that will be covered on Let's another episode. <laughs> <laughs> this will be a Tune political in podcast. Next week. Amid these bizarre happenings, according to the reports, the priests then noticed a odd pattern in Ronald's behaviour. He was calm and normal during the day, but at night after settling in bed, he would exhibit strange behaviour, include including screaming and wild outbursts, and he often urinated all over his bed and began shouting and cursing at the priests. I was going to say he was probably masturbating, but then you said the priests were there, and I was like, no, nah, that's, that's not... Yeah. Still yeah. could have happened. It still could have happened. I'm just not going to say anything, because, yeah, I don't want to get into that. Touchy. Again, we don't judge religion, but I do disagree with it. At one point during this week's long ordeal... Touchy subject today. uh, Just wait for our 9-11 episode. (laughs) Oh, no. (laughs) At one point during this week's long ordeal, one of the the priests reportedly saw an X appear in scratches on Ronald's chest, which the priest believed to signify the number 10. In another incident, a pitchfork-shaped pattern of red lines moved from the boy's thigh and snaked down towards his ankle. These types of things happened every night for more than a month and everyone witnessed the events and believed that Ronald was possessed by, in fact, ten demons. Holy shit. Because he had two cuts in him that happened to look kind of like an X. He was like... Oh, there's ten demons. Is this what you're telling me? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for helping with my son, who's probably X. just got a mental illness. Yeah, they went, oh, that's a Roman numeral. It can't be a, like, a... I've scratched an X into my chest. Romans are Italians. All right, bring him back to pasta. <laughs> they were two spaghetti strands that made an X on his chest. It, it's a far <laughs> step away from spider crawling uh, backwards downstairs. <laughs> like, just keep him with the theme today, Ben. We're just doing Italian horror stories. I've got to scrap mine. <laughs> the theme is secretly <laughs> been Italian horror stories. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Thank you for tuning in to the pasta broadcast. And uh, we'll be back next week with more pasta. No. <laughs> <laughs> Creepy pasta. Oh. Oh. A creepy pasta reading you creepy pasta. Listen to episode one. <laughs> if you haven't figured out, we're all linked. Like we're linking all the episodes together. Yeah, yeah we're building our own cinematic, cinematic universe. universe. He was actually possessed by a crayfish. Like last week's episode. <laughs> Yikes. All right, sorry, Ben. Uh, <laughs> I know you're trying to tell this story. Sorry, Ben. So all of this happened over five months with the last ritual beginning on April 
18th in 1949, where Ronald woke up with seizures, with seizures, claiming that Satan would always be with him, shouting at the priests as they laid holy relics, crucifix, medals, and rosaries along his body. Priest Walter Holloran stated that during the exorcism, words such as evil, hell, and help me, along with various other marks, appeared on Ronald's body. Allegedly, during the litany of saints portion of the exorcism ritual, Ronald's mattress began to shake and Ronald broke Holloran's nose during the process. What's the bet these priests just, like, cut this cut up? <laughs> and the Ronald guy was just trying to fight back. Sure. Because that's what it sounds like. <laughs> Help appeared on my body. These cunts were cutting in. I mean, we'll get into what could possibly cause the scratches in a moment. Okay, I'll wait. I'll be patient. So, after this exorcism was done, Ronald claimed that he had visions of the angel Saint Michael on the battlefield fighting Satan himself and that after the exorcism was finished, the devil was now gone from within him. Are you telling me, and sorry for anyone who hasn't seen season five of Supernatural, but are you telling me that he just saw Sam fighting Dean? Yes. Cool. Was this in the movie? In the what? In the movie. Um, uh, no. no. The, the, the angel on the battlefield is sad. not in the movie. Damn. In the movie, it's more a, like, shadowed face in the dark that... Does spooky stuff. And spoiler alert... Does even more spooky stuff. Cool. I'm cutting that because I don't want any spoilers. All right. Um, but, you know, the, the Exorcist isn't so much a focus on the possession. It's more drama story about the priest and him coming to deal with his faith. And yeah. His faith is questioned as him. It's more about him. It's not so much about Regan's possession, unfortunately, which is what I was expecting. But, and, like, it is a good movie from a cinematic perspective. I was just bored and didn't care for yeah. it. And there's a lot of other movies that will give you what you want with, like, the exorcism of Emily Rose and stuff like that. Again, didn't really like that one either. I think I just don't like exorcism movies. Come on, Bran. Well, uh, tune in, because I still have more of this topic to talk about. <laughs> oh, no. So, Holloran told <laughs> a reporter after the write was over that uh, the quote-unquote anonymous subject of the exorcism went on to lead a rather ordinary life, and sources say that Ronald grew up, found a wife, and started a family, named his first son Michael after the saint he believed saved his soul on the battlefield. And if Ronald is still alive today, he would be in his early 80s. Wait, wait, when wait. When did wait. he die? Ronald... He's anonymous. ...is anonymous, so we don't know if he's alive or if he's dead or not. Oh. So you're telling me this anonymous man who we don't have the name of, but we have his son's name? Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Could well, they just find out a lot of speculations about who no, the family it's all is. Um, mm. uh, I'll get into it uh, later as like there is speculation about like who they think the family is. Um, Katy Perry. People outside of it. Yeah. How do we know he's dead then? We don't. It says if we he's alive he's dead. today, James. That. Oh, okay. I thought you meant like, oh yeah, if he's alive, if he was alive today. Like, you gotta yeah. learn to listen, Lou. Yeah, hey. <gasps> oh. Louis. Yeah, it was just a massive Pasta. Simpsons fan. <laughs> I don't know that Detective whole time. Louis Pasta <laughs> <laughs> on the case. <laughs> that whole time I was picturing like Ronald McDonald. Couldn't help it. Could not help it. So like the visions in my head were just weird. I pictured the kid from the Omen, to be honest. But also, I don't remember what the kid from the Omen looks like. So, so I'm picturing a kid that might look like the kid from the Omen. Wow. When the angel Michael came up, I was picturing, like, the Hamburglar, so... <laughs> wow. And he You're... saw the Hamburglar battling Ronald McDonald on the battlefield. You know, the great biblical fight. <laughs> <laughs> now, that's a movie. Oh, if there's any artist to ever listen to this podcast, I want fan art immediately. Hell yeah. Please. I would love it. <laughs> um, so, 
for the explanation and justification of a lot of this story is obviously the religious perspective advocates for exorcisms as a way to naturally dismiss natural explanations for a case in favour of a more supernatural perspective regarding the nature of evil and demons and hell and all of that. So two Christian academics claim in their thesis that although exorcisms are not frequent, exorcisms are necessary for casting out demonic and in cases of genuine possession cannot be explained by normal everyday psychiatry. So they claim that uh, science bad, demons worse. Yeah, I mean, but also, I I mean, I guess exorcisms would still be happening today, but the rate of exorcisms in like, what was this, the 40s or 50s? 40s. 40s. The rate of exorcisms that would be happening in the 40s, I'm sure, would be vastly higher than today. Oh, yeah. Unless you know that fact, Ben. There, there was a lot more exorcisms happening back when the churches had more power over large portions of nations, um, whereas today it's sort of a closed-knit type and, like, most of it happens at... Uh, like, you have to be Italian. Where's that Pope? Where's the Pope? <laughs> Isn't wait, what's the name of Bible country? The uh, the well, James. What's what's Bible country? <laughs> what is it? Shit. Help. The the Va- Vatican. The Vatican. Vatican. That is in Italy. That's what yeah. I was after. <laughs> so, so, I was right. I was. I kept kept wanting to say valedictorian. <laughs> The Pope, the valedictorian. From what you've said so far, right, it sounds like a whole lot of just, oh, this is what happened, I swear. Not to say that spirits don't exist and can't possess people and create havoc. I do believe that, but a lot of this is just 1940s. Oh, yeah, there were words cut into him. Then we put some, like, flowers around him to stop the demon. And to me, it honestly sounds pretty dodgy. As you said... This is a bunch of priests in a room with one little boy. Oh, yeah. And I don't, again, we're not getting into that, but no. I'm not believing everything they're saying. No. Completely and can we agree ask with Ronald? No, because we don't know who he is. So go to your local Maccas. All right. Ask him yourself. <laughs> Remember the old benches they used to have at McDonald's? We'd see yeah. them, like they had like a statue of Ronald sitting on the bench. And he used to hug you, yeah. Oh, that was creepy he as hell. Hug you. Didn't he have his like arm out to like? Yeah, you know? he did. He used to have his. Oh no, arm. James, that wasn't the statue. <laughs> <laughs> oh my oh. god! <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, he used to sit there on the seat next to you. He used to hug you. I'm like, no, I don't remember empty seats. <laughs> <laughs> oh god! Yikes! <laughs> Flashbacks now. Fuck. <laughs> All right, let's continue, please. <laughs> so yeah, apparently James is the PTSD. <laughs> <laughs> apparently, the number of exorcisms has gone from about seventy percent from nineteen forty to about forty five percent as of twenty eighteen. That's still a lot. So it's still a lot. And there's about 1,700 practicing people that are allowed to perform exorcisms out in the world. So that's still a lot of people. Uh, the, that woman we're talking about who's leading that COVID cult, she's an exorcist, wasn't she? <laughs> Was she? So. Didn't we say that? Yeah, yeah. I think so. Wow. So, you know, yeah, they're out there. They're telling you not to wear your masks when... Every scientist in the world is disagreeing, <laughs> but masks yeah. is how they trap the believe? demon in. Oh yeah, true. And look where we are. That now. only makes sense. So the consensus. Love the logic. The consensus of today's experts is that Ronald was just a deeply disturbed boy and had nothing supernatural about him. So kind of makes this whole thing less interesting. Uh, Have you but- ever seen Joker? <laughs> oh yeah, deeply disturbed boy. True story. Ronald okay. McDonald. That was Ronald Doe, yeah. That was yeah. the man that was hugging you on the benches outside of McDonald's. Fuck. 
According to a statement by author Mark Opsaznik, I'm going to say, is that how that word is pronounced? To psychiatrists, Ronald Doe suffered from a mental illness. To priests, he was the case of demonic possession. To writers and film video producers, this was a great story to exploit for profit. And for those involved and saw what they were trained to see, each claimed to only speak facts, but just the opposite was true. In actuality, each party manipulated the facts to emphasise information that would fit their own agendas properly. We did not mention at the start of this episode that the theme is children are scary. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's, that's why we've been talking about Robert. Anyway, yeah. sorry. The theme's <laughs> kind of changed, though. Yeah, it's Italian horror stories now, ben, uh, Brandon, sorry. It's Pasta is Delicious. Brought to you by Detective Louis Pasta. <laughs> is he like the podcast mascot now, Detective yeah. Louis Pasta? Detective Louis can we, Pasta. Can we Google that name? Can we Google that name? Look, I'm pretty sure, sure something will it. come up. How do we spell Louis in this sense? L O U I S. L O U I S. L E W Y. No. Okay, damn it. Pasta. Oh my god, the first name that came up was someone named Louis Pasta. But like, I just typed in Louis P. <laughs> wait, oh wait. shit. Maybe it's been listening because it was like Louis Vuitton, Louis Vuitton, Louis Vuitton. And I pressed P and it went Louis Pasta. There's shrimp Louis oh, Pasta, pasta salad. P A S T E U R. He's a French biologist, microbiologist, and chemist renowned for his discoveries of the principles of vaccination. He created vaccination. Okay, a different, <laughs> a different spelling of pasta. <laughs> I'm taking it. I just got linguine pasta, so like, yeah. No, no, it's uh, it's like P A S T E U R. Yeah, typing oh, okay. in normal Louis pasta, pasta brings up shrimp Louis pasta salad. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what I got. <laughs> yeah, which is the official oh. meal of our podcast now, but no, we can't take that back, Ben. It's now official. Yeah. Well, Louis Pasteur is a pretty famous dude, so never mind. Jesus Christ! All right, we just oh, well. to, yeah. He's our podcast. He's a he's a <laughs> he's our mascot. Um. So. There's a lot of skeptics out there, such as um, a dude called Joe Nickel, um, that claim that Joe Nickel, he was he was the skeptic on the last episode who came up with the theory, the grave graveyard spiral theory on um, Frederick Valentich. Uh, see, everything's connected. Yeah. Damn. Um, We're not well, doing he, this on accident. Yeah. So he claims that nothing was reliably reported about the case beyond the abilities of a teenager to produce. So the tantrums and trances, moved furniture, hurled objects, the writing and scratches on himself. He was just redecorating his room and they were like, (laughs) demon. (laughs) Exactly. All the superficial scratches. (laughs) um, But last time we were in here, the lamp was over there. Yeah, well, I like it over here. The lighting is better. (laughs) It was like, demon. (laughs) Call your priest and send our boy to stay with the priest. (laughs) It's straight up just a 14-year-old boy going through puberty. Yeah. That, so that is all, it. all of these quote-unquote psychic phenomena were just the kinds of things that someone of Ronald's age could accomplish by himself, just as others have done before him and others have done since. Even at one point it's, saying it's, it's that nothing marvelous, exactly. Ronald had been witnessed <laughs> scratching the words hell and Christ into his chest using his own fingernails and pointing out that at no point during the exorcism does it claim that the priests ever checked his fingernails to see if there was any skin or blood underneath them. They were too busy preoccupied with his other parts. Hashtag ill. No. He <laughs> determines... <laughs> He determines that the ultimate um, that the elements of poltergeist, stream it on iTunes, phenomena and spirit communication and demonic possession taken both separately and especially together as one progressed to the other suggest nothing more so much as a young boy playing trickery on adults. Yeah, I 100%, I am in the realm of, I think, 
that it was some dodgy priests and they told some lies and the boy got himself into a really shitty situation. Oh, That's yeah. what I think. Especially since, like, 1940s cameras exist. Why didn't they have any evidence of bloody scratches on this boy and shit? What the heck? But no, so... I don't know. The the diaries of these priests are out there. The last surviving member was priest Walter Halloran, who lived until 2005 where he died of cancer, and he was the last surviving member of the actual team that performed the exorcism of Ronald Doe. Experts believe the real name of Ronald Doe to be Ronald Hunkiller. I think it's how you pronounce that last name. <laughs> Hunkiller. No wonder the priests yeah. were after him. I'm sorry, so I made a lot of jokes at the expense of the priests. I'm sorry, maybe they were great guys, I don't know. <laughs> Just they're easy targets. Although only one person reportedly knows for sure who it is, and that was Walter Hollerand, so now he's dead. Fuck! Um, the family's home in St. Louis is still standing, and there's photos online of, like, the house exterior and the staircase for some unknown reason. The, the room where the exorcism was performed in the hospital was boarded up and sealed after the exorcism was performed, and then it was demolished in 1978. Why? Because they were doing remodeling at the hospitals. <laughs> yeah, fair. <laughs> Good to know. Um, but by that point, the exorcist was already out. Yeah. Not that that means anything. The, f- the family's original house in Cottage City, Maryland, is now a vacant lot, so that was also demolished. So we've got absolutely nothing but what the priest said. Yeah, pretty much. Awesome. So, the this case yeah, I believe it. Uh, inspired, as I said earlier, the 1971 novel The Exorcist by William Blatty, um, which in turn was adapted in 1973 into a horror film of the same name. The case also inspired the 2000, the movie Possessed, which I've never seen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the, the famous, um, critically acclaimed film Possessed. Uh, 10 out of 10. Which is actually said to be a closer and more, like, closer adaption to the actual story of Ronald Doe. Um, A documentary was also made in 1997 of the case entitled In the Grip of Evil. Another documentary film was made in 2010 called The Haunted Boy, The Secret Diary of the Exorcist, where a group of investigators travel to the location mentioned throughout all of these stories and they uncover the diaries that was said to be kept by a lot of the priests and they basically go through <laughs> and explore all of these places. Dear diary. I mean, the, you can't the places that have been it. torn down well, and you don't can, exist anymore. You can still go to the vacant lot, you can still go to the hospital and like stand in the place the room would have been that sounds like how our YouTube channel is going to be. Just like, oh, so here we are in a car park that used to be a hospital where an exorcism might have taken place in yeah. the 1940s. Yeah, pretty so much. We, we just we, drag it out for a 10-minute video. When we do our Ouija when board we intentionally do stuff. <laughs> when we intentionally do stuff to like go places, it's never interesting. It's always when we accidentally stumble upon places. Like that abandoned morgue. Accident. Yeah. If you the abandoned morgue, we accidentally stumbled upon playing Pokemon Go back in 2016. 20, is that when it came out? Yeah, it was yeah. 2016. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, have a que- I have a question for you, Ben. Yeah. Was, was the, the set of The Exorcist potentially cursed at all? It was. A lot of shady stuff happened. Do you want to talk about some shady stuff that happened? It's your segment. I was just trying to segue into something I assumed was part of your segment. I mean, you can bring it up if you want to talk about specifics. Oh. A lot of cast members died, which could be a curse, or it could be that people tend to die within the, what, 50 years after a movie is released (laughs) of various causes. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> Continue. So there's a lot of similarities between, like, the original case and what was adapted, but a lot of shit was changed to make the book more scary and to make the movie more scary. So although the scratches, shouting, spitting, um, red lines all across the skin and the cursing in the movie in the movie were mimicked um, from cases of what Ronald had actually experienced. The boy's head never, in fact, turned 360 degrees. Oh. Uh, he never vomited green, vo- like, vomit, chunky vomit everywhere. Oh. And he never did masturbate with a crucifix. So... They're the three things I know about the movie. That's about it. <laughs> well, we're, we've already got more on him. <laughs> we've already got more points than this kid does then. <laughs> Between us, I'm sure we've done all three. Um, what? <laughs> I, I bet you Ben has. Oh, yeah. I've 100% uh, had my head spin 360 degrees. And you're stuck I can guarantee that else. as fact. I'm doing it right now. Too bad none of you audio listeners can see. Notice how, like, you can't hear his pain. He's used to it. Yeah, I'm I'm currently spinning my head right now. I don't believe Ben has the moves to be able to do a 360-degree head spin. I'm sure this dude dances like a white boy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> his joints move like Zero. 20 degrees. <laughs> Zero rhythm. Don't... <laughs> Kid can barely stand up without going, my back. <laughs> you think you could turn his head 360 degrees? Ben, have you ever been to a club? Yeah. Just out of curiosity. You have? Have you danced? Yeah. Okay. That surprises me. All right. Continue. Great segue, James. What does James? that surprise you, James? What are you saying? I just, I've never seen the kid dance. I'm like, all right. Doesn't surprise when me. When have we ever to gone to a party together, James? I, don't, I just can't picture you. You never dancing. invite him. <laughs> <laughs> You're the guy that waits outside for the police to show up while we're inside doing interesting shit. <laughs> I don't picture you dancing. Uh, wow. <laughs> and to see a full video of Ben dancing, just check our Instagram. People need to see yeah. him. I need to see. I'm really, really curious. Jake, we don't have a video of that, but if Submit one ever. Your songs appears, below, and I'll dance to them. If only TikTok wasn't Did you banned. Swear on that? Oh. Sure, it's I'll dance whatever. Not banned yet. But no, to go off of uh I've still got a bit to go and I've been going for a while. Um Good because mine's short. Uh to go off of the creepy stuff that might have happened on set. So some facts about the Exorcist film was that a priest was asked to bless the set after it got caught on fire. So the entire cool. set, the entire set went up in flames. So they had a priest come in and hand out, um, like and like bless the entire set. That was a mistake. He should have called the milkman. Oh yeah. <laughs> Refer um, to it back. So the spider walk scene was actually originally cut from this um, from the movie. Why? Yeah, I bought it and then I, but I didn't buy the extended version, and it wasn't in the movie. And I was like, oh, that's like the iconic scene. Yeah. Then I had to buy the extended version, and I didn't even end up watching it because I didn't want to watch it again. Wow, the actress that played Regan's mother in the film, in in the scene where Regan mutilates herself, her mother rushes over to stop her, but gets shoved to the floor by the demon. And she was actually hurt during that scene. So she actually... That's acting, baby. She actually fell to the floor and her real screams of pain can be heard in the movie. But I can list multiple films where that's the same case. That's not oh, That's yeah. not a curse. Like, bloody no. Django Unchained. Leonardo DiCaprio cut his finger open. Oh, bloody, yeah. What well, Now You See Me, the opening scene shows a woman actually almost drowning. <laughs> And like, they're like, oh, look how good she is at acting. It looks like she's all she's drowning, and she's actually going, I can't breathe, I'm stuck. <laughs> and, you know, she didn't die, but 
That was real. So the original movie crazy, teaser crazy. was actually banned in theatres and when the movie screened, the theatres themselves handed out bath bags to people. But also part of me is like, oh, yeah, but that was just, you know, what do you call marketing? <laughs> it was a, um, what do you call them? Like a stunt. Publicity stunt, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, I'm sure that's all that was. It's like how every movie ever is like, oh, you see the movie, you're gonna die. You know, like I've heard so many times, like, woman actually died while watching The Conjuring. And then we're all like, ooh. Yeah, pretty much. You never hear when a woman has a heart attack in the middle of Eat, Pray, Love. <laughs> was I meant to laugh at that? Was I meant to be funny? It's, yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you have to ask, I'm kind of cut. <laughs> I don't know, like, I found it funny, but then, like, every, everything was silent. I'm like, ooh. It's because Ben doesn't have a sense of humour and doesn't laugh at my jokes. All right, I ben, just like, I was continue. really dark. Okay, very really cool. Lin- Linda Blair was actually scared of her dummy that was made up during that demonic look that had all the cuts and all of it all over what its face. What, did you? Yeah. She was terrifying. She was, like, what, 12? Oh, she was young. Probably. I don't know her exact age. Like, I, I would have been shit scared at that age, seeing that shit right in front of me, man. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 100%. Uh, Regan's makeup slash look is legitimately, like, one of the scariest visuals in horror. Oh, yeah. It's pretty frightening. It was the first ever horror movie to be nominated for Best Picture in 1974. And although the film version of The Exorcist evoked negative reactions from religious groups with many protesting outside cinemas and, like, they wanted the film banned from actually being shown to people. The author of the original book has said that the true aim of his novel was actually to scare a generation into going back to the church. (laughs) Really? Yeah. Jesus. So he wanted to scare people into being religious again. Did it work? Uh... Who knows? I'm not religious, so it didn't work well. No. Yeah. <laughs> um, and just trying a, to scare people into situations. <laughs> Love it. As a final note, the book The Exorcist also shared elements of another possession case, which um, was the... Ludon possessions in 1634. In this case, a group of nuns claimed possession after having an illicit dream about an attractive priest named Urbine Grandilla. Don't know how you pronounce that name. Urbine Grandilla. <laughs> yeah. He's so dreamy. During the exorcisms, <laughs> they convulsed, blasphemed, and made sexual motions towards the priest, similarly to the infamous crucifix scene in The Exorcist. And in a desperate attempt to clear his name, he tried to exercise the nuns himself, testing them by speaking in Greek and as a sign of possession being an understanding or speaking of languages previously unknown to the subject. However, they had been coached and responded by saying that they had made a pact not to speak Greek at all. So despite his best efforts, he was imprisoned, tortured, and some of the nuns even, um, like, that were possessed, even came towards his defence in his trial, but they were dismissed as the devil's work and he was burned at the stake. Yeah, Greek people. All my demons hate Greek people. (laughs) It's it's like a in the demon code, we do not speak Greek. So don't trust a group of horny nuns. <laughs> okay. So that's my topic for the day. Let's move on to James talking about Mary Bell. Who is Mary you Bell? You know, also, another incident you didn't mention from The Exorcist. Yeah? The Linda Blair actually damaged her back permanently from all the jolting on the bed and stuff. Oh, uh, yeah. Sorry, wait, Linda Blair... Yeah, that is the actress. Yeah. <laughs> I keep mixing up the character's name and the actress's name. And then um, I feel like someone else, but the dude who does does the voice of Possessed Regan, I think something happened to him. 
Oh, I didn't read Regan about that one. Voice. Hold on, let me let me get that up. Did he die? Um, I'm pretty sure. Cursed. Okay, so Mercedes McCambridge, American actress. Oh. Okay, so she it was a girl. She provided the voice for the demon Pazuzu in The Exorcist. And... No, it wasn't her. She died in 2004. Someone died, like, right after the movie came out, I swear. The Exorcist death. It was Louis Pasta. Okay. I just, okay, here, here's an article. Is the exorcist cursed? Seven reasons why some think the film is haunted. Um, let me find it. Ugh. Oh, no, yeah, it was. It was Mercedes McCambridge. Um, she didn't die, but... 1987, her, her son murdered his wife and children and then committed suicide. Okay, but that was, like, 14 years later. Okay, yeah, there's no curse. No, it's a curse. Bad man. things happen to people, no. unfortunately. The reason it just... was cursed is that a lot of the actors, like, family members and stuff passed away and, like... So, like Two of the actors passed away after filming had commenced. We had a school camp in grade four that we were convinced was cursed. Got to a point where on the last night, me and all the boys in my cabin freaked out. We're like, we're going to die if we sleep separate. So we like kind of moved all the beds together. Because <laughs> 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 like, 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 so one dude, I don't know, I think yeah, one dude got his toenail ripped off. Oh. Four people were stung by jellyfish. Another girl got a zipper of her jacket caught on her eyebrow ow <laughs> and and like ripped it and they like she couldn't get the jacket off because the zipper just became attached to her eyebrow like under the skin ow. and shit ow and a bunch of other stuff happened during those like four or five days and we were just like this place is cursed man we're all gonna die so we yeah. moved all the, the beds boys. in the cab yeah we moved all the beds in the cabin into the middle of the room <laughs> and we're like just like lined up like some orphanage like from what do you call it uh Madeline no, 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 Madeline. <laughs> <laughs> like, they all got their beds lined up. We were like, that shit. <laughs> um, and we're just like, all right, we, we, they can't, <laughs> the demons can't get us here, man. <laughs> what was the logic? And, and then <laughs> it was all fun and games until the me- next morning, one of the boys had a spray bottle and decided to sp- spray us, <laughs> wake the rest up, and then pretend he was asleep. Like, Where, why? Who keeps wetting me? What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. It was a chaos. I just thought, yeah, that's that's the closest I've come to a curse. All right, James, tell us about Mary Bell. Okay, so this little girl's a bit creepy. Mine's probably going to be a bit shorter, but it is pretty interesting. So Mary Flora Bell, born 26th of May, 1957, is an English woman who, has, who as a child, aged 10 and 11... 10 to 11, in 1968 strangled to death two young boys in Scotswood, a district in the west end of Newcastle Newcastle upon Tyne. She was convicted in December 1968 of the manslaughter of Martin Brown, aged four, and Brian Howe, aged three. Wow. So I'm going to get into a bit of like the backstory of Mary Bell because she's got a pretty fucked up childhood. So Bell's mother, Betty, was a prostitute who was often absent from the family home, travelling to Glasgow from work. Mary was her first child, born when Betty was 17 years old. Like, throughout the years of childhood, her mother, like, tried to give her away. You know, there was a lot of injuries as a child as well. She was really trying to just get rid of her. She didn't want Mary. It is known, like, Mary doesn't know who her biological father was. So, for most of her life, she believed it to be Billy Bell, who was also a criminal who was later arrested for armed robbery, but she was already a baby when Bill married her mother. So it is not known who the actual father is at this point. Independent accounts from family members strongly suggest that Betty had more than once attempted to kill Mary and make her death look like an accident during her first few years of her life. Wow. Her family was... Yeah. (laughs) It's It's shocking. (laughs) Yeah, no, it's crazy. Uh, yeah, I can't imagine, like, a mother trying to kill their child and make it look like an accident, but it happens, nah. and it's fucked up. Also, them doing that, um, 
by doing that, then that's teaching the child that murder is okay. If they see mom trying to do it, oh, if yeah. not doing it, you know. Mummy tried it. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely has a mm-hmm. part to the rest of the, the story that's happening. I can't even speak English right now. But her family was suspicious when Mary fell from a window and when she accidentally consumed sleeping pills. After the fall Mary experienced, it was reported that she had suffered brain damage damage as a result, but now the damage is attributed to the abuse from her own mother. So a lot of lot of physical abuse in the early years of her life. Wow. Definitely does not help with the situation that is coming up. Yeah, it would probably impact her psychosis a lot. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Like that would mentally fuck you. Yeah. From like a very young age. <laughs> it's getting really dark and scary. Someone make a joke. No. Um Why did the chicken cross the road? Why Ben? Why Brandon? Fuck. Uh uh. <laughs> uh aren't you glad I didn't say orange? Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> So the day before her 11th birthday, Mary Bell strangled four-year-old Martin Brown in a derelict house. So it was like a little abandoned house that the children were playing in. It's kind of weird. So Martin's Brown, Martin nice. Brown's mother didn't really Cozy. care. He's like four years old playing in an abandoned house. So weird. I couldn't do that. I wasn't even allowed out of the house at four years old. <laughs> as as someone who plays in abandoned houses at the age of twenty two, uh, <laughs> yeah, there's so many like nails and shit, Ooh, and yeah. broken glass. Everything's probably going to give you a disease. Yeah, um, there was like one time when we went into that house and I stood on a nail, went through my shoe. It's not fun. I did the exact same thing when we did the last deck of hearts photo shoot back before lockdown. Um, there was like a bit of glass that got caught in my shoe. Yeah. And I was like, oh, yeah, I'm a genius. And I tried to pull it out and just cut my, my thumb open. Yeah. And then the, throughout the rest of the photo shoot, I'm just trying to conceal the blood pouring out of my thumb. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So go check out yeah. those photos to see if you can spot the blood on Brandon's hand. It's the current <laughs> uh, Deck of Hearts profile picture, the one where we're sitting on the car. <laughs> <laughs> was that at the place where we spotted the dead owl reference to episode yeah. one? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do you remember that one time we are in that house and I think there was like three of us. I think it was me, you and David and a bat like threw past our heads. We both like all ducked simultaneously. Uh, that sounds familiar, but I don't really recall it. It was pretty funny. I don't know. <laughs> so with this murder of little young Martin Brown. She had believed, it was believed that she committed the crime alone. But between that time and the second killing, she and her friend Norma Joyce Bell, no relation, same last name, weird, aged 13, broke into and and vandalised a nursery in Scottswood. Leaving, Leaving notes that claim responsibility for the killing, the police dismissed this incident as a prank. So I've seen two stories about this, so one was, like, vandalising the property, saying they did it. And one of them was um, Mary Bell's personal diary where she wrote, like, killing was good and just these pictures. There was a lot of incidents, especially with the second killing, of, like, evidence that wasn't released to the public but was in her diary. So she kind of fucked herself there. I mean, And that's how... <clears throat> It sounds like she wants to be caught, though, because she's going out of her way to oh, yeah, you're claim le- you're responsibility. You're leaving evidence of, like, dear diary, today I killed this person at this spot on this day with this weapon. Yeah, but if someone reads your diary and they read that, they're going to be super embarrassed that they read your diary and they won't confront you about it because <laughs> they'll be like, oh, uh, uh, your honor, he oh, read shit, my but if diary. if I confront her, then she'll know like, I read her diary. <laughs> Ben, stop trying to interrupt my jokes, man. (laughs) Fucking hell, Ben. (laughs) 
Yeah, but Visco, really creepy. The second killing especially is just really fucked up. So the pair took part on, actually, so on July 31st. So not long after the first killing, about two months later, the pair took part in the death again by strangling of three-year-old Brian Howe on wasteland in the same Scottswood area. Police reports concluded that Mary Bell and had later returned to his body to carve an M into his stomach with a pair of scissors. M. Wait, that was an N? This was then changed M. using the same pair of scissors but with a different hand to an M. Why? Mary Bell, I don't know. The M's N, for Mary. N for Mary. <laughs> Mary yeah, Bell. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> I, she was young, man. She couldn't spell. Like she was eight. That's it. <laughs> you said she was eight, yeah. No, ten. Ten. Ten to eleven. Ten to eleven. Ten to eleven. Ten to eleven. You know, she's got brain damage, man. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Falling out of a window. Yeah. Yeah, sleeping pills and all that. Accidentally, quote unquote. Yeah, always accidentally. Yeah. <laughs> I accidentally got pushed down the stairs. Sorry. Oh, well. <laughs> so wait, she did the N, she left and she came back and turned it into an M. Yeah, she actually came back to the body to mutilate it. She, she was sitting there thinking, oh no, I fucked that up. <laughs> I, need, I must go back and fix it. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe she was rushing for time. <laughs> so it's like she only got like three quarters of the M done and then had to come back later. <laughs> This, this reminds me of something that wasn't fixed, but also just equally hilarious in terms of bad spelling. Um... The the Manson family murders when they killed Sharon Tate, like the whole thing was like a huge build up in their cult of we're gonna do it, you know. And it was like, and like the whole, their whole thing was the words Helter Skelter, and so they killed her and they wrote Helter Skelter on the wall and they misspelled it. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, kill a no. smart, always kill a smart. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you got to think these people aren't really that intelligent all the time. All the dude, barely any of the time. Majority Pretty of much. serial killers are below average intelligence. Well, it kind of makes sense. Not that Mary Bell is a serial killer. As to be a serial killer, you'd have to have committed three murders to be classified. I know my facts. I heard that last night in a different podcast. You traitor. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I just imagine, like, her mum calling her for tea. And it's like, oh, fuck, I've got to finish this later. T, that's what my <laughs> name spells with. <laughs> <laughs> no, I imagine it's like she gets to the end and it's like, oh, I haven't talked to the boys in a while. And then goes off, hangs with the boys, comes back and goes, oh, yeah. <laughs> and the thing is, she finished the M with a different hand. As you do. So I don't, I don't know why. Have you ever tried writing with your it. non-dominant hand? It's very hard. Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's not dominant, Ben. No, but have you ever tried to see if you were ambidextrous? <laughs> what? <laughs> Definitely not. I got okay at kicking a football with my left foot, but that was as <laughs> close as I got. I can't do anything with my left leg, my right so foot, there you so. go. So where this story gets really messed up now is uh, Mary Bell also used a pair of scissors to cut off some of his hair. Don't know why, but she also cut it up, cut up his legs, cut it isn't a word, and mutilated his penis with the same pair of scissors. So it's it gets very graphic, and I don't like going into the genitals of this young fella. But the thing is, as well, yeah. like this was after the boy was dead, so it wasn't like she was doing it out of to pleasure, out of torturing him. You know, she wasn't going, ah, oh, this, you know, I want to make him suffer or anything because. It was just yeah, pure. Yeah, it was that psychotic of like mutilating the corpse, that type <laughs> like, of shit. Like pure and simple. Yeah, she's just straight up evil. If you look at pictures of her, there'll probably be one on the Instagram. She's just very. She's just got that blank look. Yeah. yeah. She's got that blank look. As the girls were so young and their testimonies contradicted each other, the precise details of what happened have never been entirely clear. So, as I said before, with like the evidence and stuff, the pair of scissors weren't released to the public as, like, a cause. So, like, no one knew about that. So that was in her book, her little diary. Oh. So police found that and were like, hmm, okay. 
something's fishy here. This She's also got written him. in her door diary, I did it, I killed him. But <laughs> Yep. <laughs> like, probably not. Oh, wait, scissors. <laughs> we didn't mention scissors. It's her, like... Yeah, it's, she's, it's kind she's of she's a not hiding the fact that she did it. No, not no, at all. No, she's not. She, if you went up she and wants said, to be hey, Mary, listen, a couple of us are concerned. Did you murder those boys? She'd be like, oh, yeah, fuck yeah. <laughs> like, of course. You know, you, she's, she wants people to know. Yeah. Yeah, exactly that. But what I feel like the police wouldn't believe her for some reason. She would have probably Snapchatted it. <laughs> Snapchat wasn't around in the 60s, Ben. Fucking grow up. <laughs> of course it was. But <laughs> Tinder was in the 70s. Like, yeah. <laughs> uh, but That's like, also I feel like the police wouldn't have... Episode two. We've, we reference our previous episodes a lot, considering this is only episode three. <laughs> <laughs> Got to get into the habit. Now people have to watch the previous episodes. Sorry. <laughs> have to build the law. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We aren't right. anthology. Got to build off each one. We've got a storyline going through each episode. <laughs> I just, I feel like even if she said she did it, the police wouldn't believe her because she's a kid. It's true. But like, I feel like those little extra details kind of helped Yeah. with yeah. the conviction. It, even if she openly admitted it like she's a kid, so people would be like, oh, no, I still think she's joking. She's just saying she did it. She doesn't but know what she's talking about. Here's a controversial topic. Everyone's quick to judge, uh, what's her name? Oh, I'm, I'm blanking. John Bonet Ramsey. Everyone's quick to judge her brother, who's a kid, and say, "Oh yeah, he did it." Um, but it's very different gonna, time periods. We're not going to yeah. discuss. Is it? Well, I don't know when was what. <laughs> I'm very I'm bad with times, but we're not going to discuss <laughs> our opinions on John Bonet Ramsey today. No, we're not. We're going to continue different on episode. with Mary Bell. So. <laughs> so an open verdict had originally been recorded to, for Martin Brown's death as there was no evidence of foul play. Although Bell had strangled him, her grip was not hard enough to leave any marks. Eventually his, de- uh, his death, his dick, <laughs> I read that completely wrong. His death was linked with Brown, Ma- Brian Howe's killing, and in August 1968, the two girls were charged with the two counts of manslaughter. So I'm going to go down to the conviction. There's not too much water. But she went back and mutilated him. <laughs> that was, it that was like, an kind accident. Of <laughs> Just because he, he wasn't dead enough already. <laughs> what? Yeah, accidentally manslaughter. my first initial... Good job, yeah, it's, police. It's, it's, yeah, no, very good. Very, very good job. You know, she went back, cut her first initial into him, mutilated his genitals, cut him up and cut his hair off. As you do. Only manslaughter. Like, what would you class that as, but? Like, it's not torture. That's murder. He was dead. <laughs> yeah, it's straight up. That's straight murder. up out the gate. Murder. Yeah. Yeah. It's murder and mutilation. Yeah, exactly that. <laughs> So on 17th of December that year, 1968, Ben, not when Snapchat was around, Norma Bell was acquitted. Uh, you can't verify that. Hold on. Shut the fuck I up. Do a quick Google and say, when did Snapchat come out? Uh, when did it come out? Uh, uh, type, 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 1968. <laughs> when did Snapchat when? come out? The popularized version of Snapchat was released in July 8, 2011. But the beta goes back as far as 1968. Ben was right. Oh, shit. Fuck. Didn't know cell phones were around back then, Ben. (laughs) Okay. Well, Norma Bell, the friend who was not related apparently, was acquitted, but Mary Bell was convicted of manslaughter on the grounds of diminished responsibility. Okay, so one gets manslaughter and the other gets nothing. (laughs) Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Justice. Come it, it on. Does they mean. admitted it. They va- what about at least vandalism? <laughs> they vandalized and like, what a nursery saying they did it. And they didn't even get caught up on vandalism. Yeah, it doesn't make sense why one was acquitted. Like it does not. <laughs> like they both they both pleaded guilty. They both said they did it. I Everything was an accident in that family, apparently. Yeah, it, it <laughs> That girl wasn't even part of the family. Same last name, not a part of the family, apparently. <laughs> so the ju- 
<laughs> the jury took their lead from her diagnos- diagnosis by court-appointed psychiatrics, who described her as displaying classic symptoms of psychopathy. Or is it psycho? How do you say that word? It doesn't sound yeah, right. I think it's psychopathy. Psychopathy. Yeah, psychopathy. Psycho- yeah. It doesn't sound right. I don't know. The judge, the judge, Justice Cusack. I always think of John Cusack. <laughs> I, I think it's Joan name. Cusack. Dis- Who? The voice of Jesse in Toy Story? I think of John Cusack. He was the one in 1408, yeah? What an underrated film. Yeah. No, he was in that t- Hot Top Time Machine, man. Good movie. Check it out. He wasn't in the second one. I want to watch 1408 again. Wasn't that that hotel room that he was stuck yeah. in? It's just him yeah, in the hotel a room for a whole movie, but it was really good. Yeah. It was really good. Yeah. No, I do. That's one I have seen. <laughs> Wait <laughs> so, till yeah, I do an episode John about Cusack. that then. Shut up. <laughs> Sorry, Ben. He just gave me the finger. Yeah, so John Cusack described her as dangerous and she posed a very grave risk to other children. She was sentenced to be detained at Her Majesty's pleasure, effectively an indefinite sentence of imprisonment. Hello. (laughs) So after prison, my story is very short, by the way, it's almost over. In 1980, 23-year-old Belle was released from Ascam Grange Open Prison after serving 12 years. It was granted anonymity, I don't know, anonymity. I yeah. can't say this word. Anonymity. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's the one. <laughs> Including a new game, allowing her to start a new life. Belle allegedly came back to Tyneside on several occasions and had lived there for some time after her release. Four years after finishing her sentence, she had a daughter on the 25th of May, 1984. The girl knew nothing of her mother's past until reporters discovered Belle's location in 1998 and the pair had to leave their home with bedsheets over their head. So I can't imagine being the daughter Mm. of Mary Bell, not knowing anything, and then all of a sudden having your pretty much world go backwards. Oh, yeah. She's still alive today. That's all I got, Brandon. I don't know what you're waiting on. (laughs) She's still alive today. Yeah. Do you want us to react to that? Oh, really? No. Oh, my God. Really? She's still alive today, guys. Yeah. It's crazy. I know. Right? A shocking revelation. <laughs> uh. <laughs> there's no curse on this lady. If only. Yeah, there's not much about her right now, which I couldn't really find Do you about. think she would have wear a mask down today? And done an interview. Ben, I'm talking. What was it? God. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> do you think she would wear a mask today? Yes. What did you say, sorry? Do you think she would wear a mask today? Oh, probably not. Or do you think like she would be, be like one of the Karen's. people? Yeah. I think I she'd also be wearing agree a mask. I, I reckon she'd be walking around going like, nah, I don't think people should be wearing masks. I think they should be carving N's into their bodies. Sorry, M's into their bodies. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's making masks for people with like the, her first initial in it. Yeah. And she's selling them. She's one of those sweet old ladies. She's in there knitting. You know, she's making masks for people. She's sweet now, okay? You know, her, her at 10 and 11 years old doesn't matter, all right? Her past is the past, all right? <laughs> you know, she killed two young boys aged four and three. Let's just forgive her. Don't. The the court did. I mean, but she was 10 to 11. She could be a completely different person now. Who knows? Yeah. I don't know. I feel like the amount of abuse she caught for about 10 to 11 years and then 12 years in prison doesn't really, you know. Yeah, I'm not saying she's not damaged, but she could be reformed. True. I know. She's anonymous. Mm. They've given her a second chance, and I think we should respect that. And let her have a second chance. Imagine you were being held accountable for something you did when you were 11. Like, it seems to ha- throughout the whole rest of your life. <laughs> it seems to happen God. a lot these days. <laughs> You've been on Twitter? I guess. <laughs> Made a t- <laughs> to be fair, if any tweets resurfaced from us in 2011, we were actually like 12 <laughs> years old. <laughs> so. <laughs> 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 
but most of my tweets were just supernatural is on tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mine were just like that too. Like, share if you like big butts. It's like, yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm 14, I like big butts. <laughs> I had no opinions when I was 12 on anything, so <laughs> my tweets weren't very interesting. <laughs> no, it's so weird when you see, like, people rise up on, like, oh, this, like, TikTok celebrity, and it's like they're 13 years old, and it's like, when I was 13, I was, like, staring at the TV, eating, like, sour worms, going, like, oh, I like this show. <laughs> <laughs> I went to the movies and watched like G Force at like age twelve and thought that was cool. <laughs> the one with the guinea pig. <laughs> yeah, and Zach Galifianakis. <laughs> Cute. <laughs> twelve year olds are so different these days, though. <laughs> you see them like fucking having seagies at the station. It's like really. <laughs> Pimped out. Twelve year old me was really into Alvin and the Chipmunks, too. The second one sucked, man. Sorry. It did. Yeah. I mean, I was hyped for it. Same. The first one was good. From what I can remember, yeah. I haven't watched it in <laughs> 10 years. Are they still making those it's movies? probably not good. What was that? Who knows? When was the last one of those? Because I don't know. I, like I don't think ago. it was like long ago. <clears throat> it wasn't that long ago. When was it? You guys getting spooked yet? Ooh, spooky <laughs> chip. <bro>. Ooh, <laughs> cool fun, Uncle Ian. You know, they did actually. The first thing I ever knew of the Chipmunks was like Halloween specials and shit that used to be on like TV. Oh, yeah. Before like the movie and stuff, I remember there was like a were- werewolf one. <laughs> That's the first time I'd ever seen them, so they were pretty spooky. Oh, the last <laughs> movie was in 2015, so it's been five years. What the fuck? Oh, so <coughs> more coming. <laughs> uh, it doesn't say. It'll be a reboot on Disney+. Plus. Okay, well, you... Ben, hit us up with those social medias. Yeah, so our social media. So you can email us with thegraveyardbroadcast at gmail.com. You can find us on YouTube where all of these podcasts go up with a visual element. Um, at the Graveyard Broadcast. You can follow us on Twitter and Insta at Grave Broadcast. You can also follow us for Half Past Three, which is our Twitter and Insta is HP3 Official. For those sold on the visual element, it's, it's what? Like, it's just like the sound it's thing. A yeah, it's the sound wave. image <laughs> with a moving sound wave. One day we'll Maybe record... One day. These episodes with a camera, Which but you can't you can't close and still listen to on your phone unless you've got YouTube Premium. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I say so with a visual element because us. one day we'll, when we're able to be in the same room, we'll set up a camera and we'll record a visual element. Maybe still thinking about it, but probably not unless we get an actual studio. Who knows? We'll look into it. We're episode three at the we- moment. Episode four will be next week. Do go to our YouTube channel, though, because we will be uploading cool stuff once this is over. But at the moment, the the podcast is, you can just listen to wherever is easiest. Um, What's episode four's theme, Ben? So episode four is I put a spell on you. So it's all about hexes, curses, and witchcraft. What? Okay, so magic. Yeah. Yeah. Could have just said magic. Trying to make it entertaining, it's James. Name. I didn't like it. Oh, ne- it's called next week is about magic. <laughs> it's I'm the gonna fucking. Put a spell on you. <laughs> I'm trying to put on a spectacle, you fucker. Right. <laughs> didn't criticize when this theme was called "Children Are Scary" instead of just kids. <laughs> I don't know. He just went. I'm gonna put a spell on you. I'm like, huh? <laughs> Yeah, because it's the song. I put a spell on you, you dickhead. Shut up. It was just shit. Sorry. That by the rogue traders? Uh. <laughs> what kind of music do you listen to? 
Anyway, tune in next week where I've killed James and the podcast will be about how I murdered him and carved an N or M into his chest. He carved half a B into me and came back later. Yeah, <laughs> it'll be a P and then I a B. St- I start off with a P and end with a B, yeah. <laughs> All right, well, please rate and review us on Apple Podcasts or wherever you are listening. Uh, uh, Subscribe as well or favorite or follow or whatever the podcast app you use has. Yeah. Um, Even if you don't use Apple Podcasts, if you have access to it, please go and leave a rate and review. Um, Yeah, if you and also, yeah, if you know anyone who you think might be interested in that podcast, please share it. What's the song to take uh, us out this evening, Brad? Not up to that, Ben. Shut the fuck it's up, up to me. <laughs> I put a spell on no, you. I'm just, I'm just messing with you. I am up to that. Um, <laughs> I make music solo as Bran Reed. I also make music under the name Deck of Hearts. And I am going to play a sample in the outro. Today's song is called Nevermind. And the link to that will also be in the episode description along with all social medias and whatever else. I don't think we needed to put anything else. Again, check out Instagram to see photos of anything we did mention today. And yeah, I'm Bran Reed. I'm Ben. I'm James. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. But I know that's more than Ciao. I've been offering lately. I know my brain has been hovering. Questions I know I'm stuck in all my obsessions